Welcome back to Flat Track Fever 2019, a WFTDA recognized tournament. I'm Death Nella, joined by Mad Max. And we are so excited to bring you the first mixed gender battle of the tournament. Crude Assassins against the near death oddities. Crude Assassins coming from Fort McMurray. So excited to have these teams here. Now, Mad Max and I have both actually skated against a lot of these skaters out there. So it's going to be really fun to see this mix. And there is a big mix here. We're seeing different skaters joining in. That's kind of how it rolls on the prairies. You have skaters from Alberta getting together with skaters from Saskatchewan. It's going to be a really fun time. And we're so lucky here at Flat Track Fever that we get the WFTDA action like we just saw between Avalanche City and the Saskatoon Mine Fox. We also get the mixed gender bouts and we get the awesome Battle of Alberta basically playing out. It's going to be a lot of fun this weekend. So let's get into our rosters because there's only a little bit of time left to Derby. And we will start with the Crude Assassins. Number one won the Herminator. Number two, Misconstrued. Number two, four, Electro, Electro Q Shunner. Number three, three, Hot Start. Number four, six, eight, Baywop. Number five, two, Killer B. Number seven, five, two, five, rather, AK Dementor. Number nine, three, Doug Drillmore, who is also your captain this game. Number one, two, Side Dish. Number two, zero, Super Wench. Number three, Goldie. Number four, Schemo. Number five, one, four, She's Hell. Number six, Rotten Broughton. And number eight, Let's get Lizzie kill. And your bench staff is Cutie Sly. Now over to our next roster, Mad Max. Number 12, Yabby. Number 1, 2, 3, 4, Troublesome. Number 1, 4, Pee Wee. Number 1979, London Brawling. Number 21, Harley Sin. Number 2222, two, 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 Double Shot. Number 286, Clancy John. Number 30, Push Push Pass. Number 31, Lurch. Number 314, Low Key. Number 33, Isa Hot Broad. And number 8008, Vulcan Death Trip. With our bench staff being uh, Clumsy Lover. And the game is about to get started. Beautiful timing there, Mad Max. You were a phenomenal producer in our last game, too. So you've been up early with this flat track fever, and we are so excited. want to say thank you to the co-hosting organizations, uh, which are Calgary Roller Derby and Chinook City Roller Derby. All right. <laughs> Everyone is pumped up right now, yeah. <laughs> getting excited for their first bout of the day. And we have number six, AK Demented, out for the crude assassins, and she grabs lead. Oh, yeah. Number one, four is struggling here. Uh, he looks, he's taking his star off, but it's, uh, we're unsure if he's going to pass. Nope, he comes right through. Yeah, a little star stash action by Pee Wee. Already things heating up, but action's kind of stopped right now on, the, on turn one. AK Demented calling it off. Picking up four points. Awesome. And that was Rotten Broughton. My apologies. I definitely called the wrong name there. That was Rotten Broughton. I can't miss those pants now, so now <laughs> I know. You got it. See, uh, this is the thing. When you only just have your coffee for the day, these things happen. You definitely. All right, well now we've got number six, Sneak Attack, uh, lining up against nine three. That's yeah. Doug Drillmore. That's your captain for the Crude Assassins. Playing a little bit of uh, defense, getting a little tricky here. That was a good little switch up there, calling back Baywop to help keep the near-death oddities at bay, but has that worked? Oh, apparently it did. Both, both jammers, Mad Max, are going to the penalty box. Uh, that's always fun. They sit for about one second, and then the first one has to go back out with the other following right behind. And that's right, Doug Drillmore opting to go back a slightly different way and actually beating uh, Sneak Attack to the chase there. Oh, big hit there by, that is AK Demented. <laughs> yes, you got it this time. Uh, this is a pretty 
good matchup for Jammers, but it looks like number six, uh, Sneak Attack, is sneaking out right out into the front. Oh yeah, that, that's for sure. That was an incredible play too. Using the momentum coming from the back of the pack, pushing forward, wow, incredible. All right, looks like we've got some defense. Oh yeah, Sneak Attack's got a nice push in from his, his offensive player there. That is, I can't even see who that is, but I one four, I think. Low key, doing we're, a nice job. We're gonna get to know these skaters' names quite well, and actually, Mad Max will be skating against these teams later today with the SRDL Killaby. So we'll get your perspective on what it's like being out there. But wow, sneak attack! Just yeah. coming back, of course. There's no lead assessed in this one. We're gonna keep going for another 30 seconds. So yeah, that's that's fun. It's always tough to do a full two-minute jam, but these two luck up to the challenge. Yeah, Doug Drillmore really liked his strategic attitude at the beginning, but now it's just a foot race, right, at the end of the day. And yeah. that is a penalty assessed to number one, two. That's Yabby. <laughs> Almost makes me want to say Yabby Dabby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what he was going for. <laughs> Perhaps. And we yeah. have another penalty assessed to AK Demented. That looked like a Ooh. back block penalty. Sneak it down. Jumps past to score those points. And the oh. jam is finally called off. As a, as a viewer, we're so lucky to see a nice two-minute jam right off the start because everyone's got their energy still. It's nice when you get to see that. Probably not that great for them, but, no. you know, that's the way it is. We have number one, two out there, side dish for the Crude Assassins. And that's uh, 286 Clancy John for the near-death oddities. And just to, so everyone at home knows, uh, Crude Assassin's wearing black and purple. All the near-death oddities are wearing red, and it's the near-death oddities out with Lee. Yeah. All right, looks like there's another penalty for on 3-1. That's Lurch for the near-death oddities. I, I have skated against Lurch many a times. Uh, she's a difficult blocker to get by, so that's definitely a help for the Crude Assassin's there. All right, so near-death oddities are calling it off. Now we're gonna be starting a fresh jam. And look at the score so far. It's gonna be a tight one to start. I mean, our last game as well started this way too. So we'll see if one team will be able to get the other to play their game, right? But it's gonna be a tough go. Rotten Broughton out again, up against Pee Wee, the first matchup of this game. Yeah, we'll see how he does. Last time she got the lead, but uh, we'll see, uh, see how it turns out this time. Oh, little shove there from Rotten Broughton. Not gonna shy away. Oh. I, I do love a jammer that loves to hit too, and wow, that paid off for Rotten Broughton yeah. there. No cut because uh, the blocker that hit her out also fell off the track, so that's a great move for her. Exactly, Mad Max, and that was beautiful work by Pee Wee, taking the inside line so easily. Yeah, Just so. Just a little bit of space. So. Oh, pile up, yep. <laughs> Oh, Apex jump from Rotten Broughton, and but Pee Wee's right behind. He's sneaky, and he had the lead too. <laughs> Good call by the uh, the near death oddities though to continue playing that. It was a deadlock there, but we're seeing points on the board, and that's what these teams want to do no matter what, right? Get that base number high and keep going. We're seeing the matchup now. We have Doug Drillmore out for Crude Assassins. Yeah, and uh, sneak attack out again uh, for the near death oddities. Uh, so this will be interesting. Sneak Attack really had um, kept getting the inside line on the last jam. So we'll see how it turns out this time. And oh. looks like oh, it looks like Doug's push may have even helped a little bit. That's yeah. always a tricky one. I know. Drillmore now trying to get that inside line, but once again, it's Sneak Attack. Yeah, Sneak Attack. Um, yeah, he's a squirmy one. Really likes to use that footwork, get the inside line. Uh, those jammers are always hard. <laughs> And right now the action is on turn two. A forearm penalty assessed to sneak attack. And that means a power jam situation for Doug Drillmore. I, I'm not sure if he's seen yet. Okay, now he's acknowledged. Yeah. He knows. <laughs> All right, so near death oddities are going to have to be playing some hard defense here. Um, whereas the crude assassins are going to be trying to, you know, get that offensive play, get in there, push them out. Oh, they're hanging back though. Yeah, and it looks like Doug saying, you know, we can, I can do this on my own, but can he? He has drawn a penalty though on the near death oddities. A multiplayer that goes to Yabby. That's his second of the game already. Yeah, we are pretty early in too, so. Yeah, I mean, penalty troubles in the last game didn't quite get anyone in mega trouble, but still, 
you in a tight race, you just can't afford to have that one less blocker out there. No, definitely not. Uh, sneak attack again. Oh, not quite taking the inside line. Still uh, falling on the track, having to go right back again. Drillmore coming around slow, assessing the situation. <laughs> getting a really slow and steady wins the race, I guess. Look at him go. Oh, but he's getting big hits from 3-0. Uh, push, push, pass. Yeah. Oh, and that's a penalty there. That's oh, a wow. cut track on Doug Drillmore. So now things have changed in favor of near-death oddities. Remember, their jammer is in the penalty box right now, going to be released immediately. So sneak attacks coming around the long way again. Um, you can sort of choose whichever way you want to go. Oh, jams off. I do want to give a quick shout out to our incredible ref crew that we have. This is the breadwinners. All the ref crews have bread related names. <laughs> Wonder Bread, Breadwinners, Flatbread. Well, it is the breadwinners out here. And that's Sweet Justice, Hang 11, Nitro, Jeff, Short Fuse, Eddie, Vic, and Scrappy. We're very grateful to have you on board. All right, so we got Clancy John up again, jamming against. Oh, jamming alone, right? Because that penalty. But as we say that Doug Drillmore is released from the penalty box, this could be advantageous for the crew to Assassins. Oh, not yeah, quite. Lurch, not. <laughs> Lurch had her eyes on him the whole time. Yeah, Clancy John, bit of a bulldozer here, coming on through. Sometimes when you get released from the penalty box like that, it can be a benefit. There was a star stash there by Doug Drillmore, who's now out on his initial. Right. Looks like Lurch is going to be helping out here. Yeah, they're breaking it up, making some room. Troublesome. Was trying to make some room there, but the jam was called off. And right now the game, Mad Max, is at a good pace. I think for both of these teams, they're able to really lock down. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was talking to Sonya Blade, who will be skating in the next bout, she mentioned that the floor, the slickness of it, changes throughout the day. Oh. So that can also really impact the speed of a game. But right now, everyone's able to lock down and really sink into those spots. Yeah, and this is really close so far. It was like we're sitting with the Crude Assassins at 34 and the Near Death Oddities 27. So it's anyone's game right now. Ooh. Of course, the Crude Assassins making what, like a seven hour travel day all the way from Fort McMurray. Quite a jaunt. It's Pee Wee out there, though, with lead. Yeah, it looks like the Near Death Oddities are holding really well there. But, oh, oh, not quite. We have Let's Get Lizzie Kill out there for the Crude Assassins. Her first time with the star, and she's out on her initial. Yep, Pee Wee calls it. Sometimes I like to call that a hidden quit. <laughs> <laughs> just beautiful work, though, to stay on your skates when you get just bumped around like that. Incredible. And do want to call attention to as well the Near Death Oddities bench coach is. Clumsy Lover, who was on the house call earlier and will be joining us on the stream later today. She also brings with her a wealth of knowledge. She was just in the Big O playing with Living Dead, who will be skating in tomorrow's big premiere bout uh, at 9 o'clock, oh, 8 o'clock, wow. I believe, tomorrow night. That'll be quite exciting, I think. All right. Ooh, ooh this and time. We, yeah, and it's the like first time out there for Side Dish, who has lead for the Crude Assassins. Yep, uh, sneak attacks falling close behind. Uh, teams are going to try to set up some D here. These are two pretty squirmy jammers, so you want to be hard and you want st stable. Oh. And the jam is called? Oh, the jam is called, and yeah. that is, I believe, a net win there for near-death oddities. We'll yeah. just take a peek here, see how that lines up. Yeah, that's four for them. Yeah, I was going to say you need to be uh, stable, strong, and on the line with these kinds of jammers. Uh, yeah. They're, when they're squirmy and they're fast like that, you can't give them an inch of space on the line. Oh my gosh, and these these jammers are just that. In fact, they're all type of jammer out there. And interesting enough, with the Crude Assassins making the choice to put out a bunch of different jammers. I wonder mm. if they're trying to figure out matches, but meanwhile, Doug Drillmore out with lead on that jam. Oh yeah. Yeah, Clancy John's getting pushed out. The Crude Assassins are holding him really well there. Well, I think we're going to get a no pack soon, though. Yep. And Doug Drillmore picks up four. Getting caught up, though, on Yabby there. All right. Looks like Drillmore's calling something, telling everyone to hang back and let him through. Yep. And he hit, hits and quits, gets through, scores those points, calls it off. 
Just incredible work by these teams. It is just go, go, go out there. We'll have Rotten Broughton out for the crude assassins up against Pee Wee for Near Death Oddity. So Near Death is uh, running a much tighter jammer rotation. An interesting call. Not sure how they're what their over what their plan is, I guess, Mad Max for the whole tournament, but you have to be mindful of that too. Yeah. Um, you can really tire those jammers out if you're riding, running a tight uh, schedule, especially if a jammer gets injured. That can really screw up your planning for the rest of the tournament. So, and That was some beautiful blocking there by Rocky Balboa for near to the oddities, but Ron Broughton able to get through, being chased closely by Pee Wee right now. Yeah. All right. Got a really strong tripod here for the near-death oddities. Big, strong blockers, but they don't quite get that line, and both the jammers switch through. Well, that was, I guess, a win for both sides on that one because even though, yeah, they couldn't really stop Broughton Broughton, Pee Wee was able to get out right away. So yeah. looks like the jam is going to continue to run. Don't see any bench coaches saying to call it. We'll see. Um, is there going to be a call here, or are they just going to keep running this jam? Well, with the crude assassins already leading the points, it really does serve them well to just keep collecting. Yep, yeah, and that's that's exactly what they do here. And then look at that, Pee Wee getting hung up there on Schemo. Yep. Whoop, shoulder on shoulder here. We got a real matchup. Schemo's got to watch some of those oh. directionals, but it looks like there's no call there. And Pee Wee just getting really almost shrugged off to the inside. I wouldn't even say bumped. It was like a shrug, yeah. Mad Max. <laughs> Definitely. Really like the pacing of this game. Like I said, I think it's advantageous for both teams. The slower pace, the digging down. Yeah, definitely. We, I think this is a really, this is a well-matched game. Uh, the players are similar in size, similar in speed, and similar in skill. Ooh. We, yeah, we have a star, star pass, pass. Uh, right as it's called. Yeah, that was a star pass to Rocky Balboa. Roxy Balboa. Roxy. <laughs> I just love Rocky so much. Roxy, that is right. All right. <laughs> Sneak it out, back out. Um. And this time up against Side Dish. This is the first time we've seen these two. Actually, no, I believe this was a matchup as well earlier on, but it's interesting to see mm -hmm. who the Crude Assassins are fielding every time. And the Crude Assassins bench, bench manager for this game is Cutie Sly from the Saskatoon Mind Fox, who just skated in the previous game as well. So. Oh, yeah. Looks like uh, Crude Assassins get lead here. Yeah, that's uh, side dish. It's easy to spot side dish with the little waving bandana. I first there. I thought it was a ponytail, but no, it is a bandana. <laughs> <laughs> but now we're seeing the pack speed up, Mad Max. Yeah. Interesting choice. Crude Assassins deciding to go that route. Whoop. Is he going to call it? Um, nope. No, he is not. We have a failure to reform call, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, calls it, calls it, calls it. <laughs> And sometimes I love that furious uh, jammer call. You know, you're like, please, please, please. <laughs> yes, please see me. And that's the other thing that sometimes if you've never skated in roller derby, you, you don't always appreciate. There's actually so much communication happening between jammer refs, jammers. Uh, of course, your inside pack refs, refs, outside pack refs, telling skaters, like, what's going on. It's, it's just incredible. If you can watch those nuances, which I believe are being caught on the stream, it's just so yeah. fascinating. No, the official level of this tournament is incredible. So we are really lucky to have the officials we do. Very lucky. And they come from all over, just like our skaters. And it is a lead for near-death oddities, Clancy John. That's a, oh, not followed close, though. Um, and that's Drillmore following him. I, I do love the smiles, Mad Max, <laughs> on both of their faces. Oh, yeah. Something tells me this is a matchup that's happened before. <laughs> yeah, something tells me that they probably skate together, too, every once in a while. <laughs> And that's how those things go. I know as well, sometimes skaters get excited about coming to Flat Track Fever because it might be the first time they get to skate against someone that they've skated with. So you just never know what helps motivate yeah, <laughs> some definitely. of those matchups. This is the first time, though, we're going to see Rotten Broughton up against. Oh. That's Harley Sin Two for one, yeah. the near death oddities. But looks like we're going to have an, a timeout, an official timeout. All right. And we do want to. Have a quick look at our NSO crew. So we're just going to hold on just a second here. Actually, we're going to wait on that because it looks like we're returning to action right away. All right. See this matchup here. Near death oddities are switching it up a little bit, so this is going to be exciting. 
and that's Harley Sin's first jam of the game. Definitely, and it is important when you they are starting to fall a little bit now. We're seeing a slightly bigger lead. A back block penalty though is Sesta Harley Sin. That's gotta hurt a little. Oh yeah, that gives Rod and Rod an easy lead. Uh, we'll see what they do here with this power jam. And Ron is communicating with her bench as she's about to approach turn two. Works well, because her team, her blockers have stopped the other blockers from moving any far forward. Oh yeah, it's a little bit of a scramble out here. Ron Broughton comes right through. Oh, but there oh. is a penalty call. Oh, no, there isn't. Someone we else have, is getting the penalty. <laughs> yes, four points assessed to Rotten Broughton there. That's push, push, pass, the pivot for near-death oddities. All right. Ron Broughton getting stopped here by some of those big blockers on the near-death oddities. They're doing a great job with only three, two blockers out there. They may have gotten a little bit of an assist, actually, from crude assassin Schemo, who made the mistake of blocking a blocker into his jammer. That uh, does happen, and this it is does. great review, right? Great things to know for next time. Oh, and the jam is off. And that's, that's a big... Big jam actually for Crude Assassins. Eight points in this game is gonna make a huge difference. We're now 69 for the Crude Assassins, 47 for Near Death Oddities. Especially in like a, a tight game like this, you know, you wanna make sure you're putting those points on the board every single time. All right. So yeah, we're in a uh, team timeout right now uh, for the Near Death Oddities. And we're going to mention our non-skating officials. I believe that we have Red Baron, Phil Hollywood, Party Casher, Crasher, my apologies, <laughs> Molly Golightly, Athitude, Amy, Nerd Herder, Just Paula, and Miss Koozie. We're very grateful to have our non-skating officials join us, including, not to mention, actually, all of the announcers. <laughs> Well, announcers, yeah. <laughs> I meant to say volunteers. Yes, those and volunteers are crucial. You can't run a tournament without people manning the door, watching out. We have a, a skate ramp, Mad Max. Are you going to try that later? Uh, nope, no, nope, I <laughs> will not try that later. You are skating it about. That's probably a smart move. But we have volunteers helping out with a skate ramp here at Flat Track Fever. And We're medics. So we lucky. cannot forget our medics. Cannot Always on them. the site, ready to deal with any injury that comes about. So we very grateful to them. And we'll have plenty more love to share in just a moment as we wind down this team timeout. Looks like the teams are ready to go. Jammer timer calling five seconds. And this is a, for a new matchup that we're seeing, though. Let's get Lizzie Kill up against Sneak, Sneak Attack. Attack. Yeah. Lizzie Kill is pushing her way through. A little bit of jostling here, some falling. And, oh, is that a penalty? Yep. Oh, so that Lizzie Kill's going to the box now. But that does put the Crude Assassins on penalty kill mode right now. And they could, oh, Whoa, no, they back. don't keep him back. Holy moly, that was a spin there. They always say try to keep your momentum forward and that spins aren't always, you know, the best maneuver. Uh, yeah, they can be. And in that case, oh. wow. Wow. He Beautiful landed. apex jump. Doesn't matter if you don't land on both feet standing up. You're nope. still in bounds. You're good to go. Yeah, as long as you're in bounds, that apex jump is good, and he is taking full advantage of that. Meanwhile, let's let let's get Lizzie Kill is coming back to approach the pack here. Our crowd is really amping up in here. The excitement, you can feel it in the air. Ah, sneak attack just gets a little line bump out there by the Herminator, and that will drag him back. Wow. There's a lot of noise. Sneak attack manages to hear the call off. Really well planned, well timed. I am surprised you heard that call off because it was nuts in here there. The excitement was up, everyone was yelling. Track got a little frantic, that's kind of fun. Wow, so that's eight points for near death oddities and we mentioned it in the first game. We're gonna mention it again, Mad Max, because you're aware of this too as a skater. No longer able to get five points on a jam because no. of a jammer lap. So in those power jam moments, it really is about hitting the gas and you want to collect as many four points as you can. Yeah, that loss of jammer lap point is definitely keeping our scores tighter. Uh, less runaway games, for, that's for sure. And the jammers really have to be like well, I love I love a close game. I don't like playing in a close game always, but I love watching close games and this has been so much fun. In that one, it is scoreless for both teams. Yep. 
And again, we're going to see Rotten Broughton out there with Harley Sin. That's going to be, it looks like a pretty well matched uh, jam, uh, similar sides jammers. We'll see how it goes. Ron Brun's proved to be pretty strong in her last few jams, so. Both teams, blockers, setting up in the same formation, but it is near to the oddities with the front there oh catching yeah. Rotten Broughton right now. So if Harley Sin can get by. Yep, oh, she's finding the edge, she finds the oh, edge. Oh, and she does. She gets past the Herminator, who couldn't quite cover the outside line there. Yeah, they, they both squished out. <laughs> and Ron Broughton having a little fun here but watching as perhaps it might stay scoreless, we'll see. Oh yeah, look at that pinch there. Near Death Oddity is doing a nice pinch on Rotten Broughton, holding her. And that super wench out there with the crude assassins line in all black, feeling really good about her efforts too. Um, I saw London Brawling doing some really good holds in that last jam too, so. And honestly, I mean, anybody can play derby, but when you're blocking, sometimes it helps to be, uh, have the size, have the height, uh, cover, be able to cover the track. I've got to say, it is it is an interesting sport in that way because everyone has advantages, disadvantages to being tall, short, whatever. I mean, I'm a shorter skater. There's definitely advantages and then disadvantages. Yeah. Well, Skating against the Herminator, for one, is always an interesting time. Well, as a jammer, sometimes being shorter is better because you can get a lot of penalties drawn on you from your height. Oh my goodness, look at this single blocking by oh. AK Demented. Sneak attack though, possibly finding a sneaky route around, we'll see. Oh, not quite. Getting knocked out there, coming back, recycled. Able to reset and wow, AK Demented is even using near-death oddity blockers to help block sneak attack who is now out of the pack though and just behind Let's Get Lizzy Kill. He's gonna, looks like he's gonna try to pass, maybe. We'll see, forces a call. Wow. And I wanted to show you, Mad Max, the incredible overlay that we have for the stream that breaks down the jammer points, and I haven't really been able to do that the last few jams because they've been so tight. We'll see what happens now because She's Hell is out on the line for Crude Assassins Ooh. her first time with the star. Yeah, and that's uh, up against uh, Clancy John. We'll see how this goes. Clancy's coming in from behind. Interesting. Oh, Whoa, wow, look. Pushing. Just bulldozing his way through to the yeah, front. There was a huge assist there by Lurch, though. Coming in, I don't think the Crude Assassin's line was quite ready for that. No way. But she's hell is out. About a half lap behind Clancy John. All right. Near Death's gonna try to give some help to Clancy John. We'll see how that goes. See if they can reform in time. Yep. Oh boy, Clancy John able to call it off and squeaks out two points for that one. And that's what it's gonna take here, Mad Max. I think it is gonna be a bit of a chip away game and it's gonna stay this tight. We now have seven minutes left just in this first half. I'm, I never wanna rush Derby, but it's always intriguing when you think like the second half, how are they gonna adjust? How are you gonna kinda come through? But that's ahead of ahead of us. I'm getting antsy. This is an exciting game. Yeah, definitely. Especially with both teams operating with low bench staff, uh, they're they're basically doing it on their own. They're making their own strategy, working it out as they go. Oh wow, Rotten Broughton able to take that outside line. No problem. Oh wow, S still pushing. That's uh, Harley Sin uh, jamming for the near death oddities. And as she oh she's gonna go to the box. Oh, we see some fun juking moments here oh. from Rotten Broughton. Still getting caught up though on Roxy Balboa. Yeah, Rotten Broughton's on a power jam right now. See how the near-death oddities respond. Yeah, and Roxy is captaining the near-death oddities this game. She comes with a lot of experience, knows the game well, oh. but oh, unable to bounce Rotten Broughton to the inside there. Looks like the crude assassins, let's see. Uh, they see the jammer standing, they formed up, ready to play some defense. And Harley Sin is out of that penalty box, coming up against a full tripod. Oh the yeah. The crude assassins, and you, you know, Fair like, oh, wow. London brawling, offering some hard hits there, but 
not gonna, it's not gonna help too much because Drillmore pushes out Harley Sin. But I will say this, London Brawling effectively knowing which blocker to hit though to allow Harley Sin, even though she was eventually knocked out, allow her that path, which is so vital in roller derby. You can't just knock everyone. That doesn't really always help. You wanna knock the person who is creating the most damage uh, in the moment to your jammer. Yeah, definitely. Part of that is watching, learning, seeing how people respond, seeing who's stronger. And then picking that moment to hit. And once again, I'm really enjoying how all the blockers from both teams here are really keeping cool, calm, and collected. But the Herminator for Crude Assassins is just sitting down in the penalty box as the next jam will start. So that's a full 30 there. Oh, yeah. This game is moving so fast. Oh, yeah. my gosh. What a, This is the second game of Flat Track Fever 2019, a WFTDA recognized tournament and we are so grateful to co-hosts Calgary Roller Derby and Chinook City Roller Derby. It's been eight years of flat track fever in Calgary, Alberta, but the first time it is WFTDA recognized. Mm, that adds an extra layer of excitement, that's for sure. Definitely seeing the game grow in Western Canada, especially in the higher level derby coming out. And wow, as I talk about that, sneak attack out in front. And it, it look, he's got a definitive lead. Oh definitely helpful because now sneak attack is a full lap ahead of let's get lizzie kill that is shortening but able to scooch out fast will he keep going is he gonna yeah is he gonna call it or is he gonna oh it looks like he's gonna keep skating yeah wait for those points clumsy lover feeling very confident and it paid off wow. a back block call on let's get lizzie kills going to give sneak attack a power jam of course herminator now has been released from the penalty box so just a few more blockers out there now too yeah, but it was a good call in their behalf because now sneak attacks got that power jam looking out in front Ooh, getting a hard hit from herminator oh. oh my lord and we're getting a little bit of help from near-death oddities that they decide to do more of a passive play there interesting call what Ooh. A jam, oh my goodness, 12 points for near-death oddities, that's huge. Look now at the difference, 84 to 70 only. Yeah, we saw Miss Construed uh, go down there at the end of the jam, but she got back up on her feet, skated off, so that's always a good sign. It is, I mean, we, especially with a tournament, uh, just keeping yourself as healthy as you can is so pivotal, and making sure to rest when you can too can be really tough. And pivotal. we're seeing, yeah. <laughs> You want to describe that one, Mad Max? I like that move. So to use correctly. Uh, so it's kind of funny because uh, there's a position in roller derby called the pivot. If you're watching, you probably know that. But um, the pivot has a unique position where they can accept the star from the jammer in a star pass, and then they become the jammer for the rest of the jam. So uh, using the word pivotal is a pun that I just explained to all of you. <laughs> all right, Pee Wee's following. Let's get Lizzie Kill. She is looking for the in, coming through, pushes through that those big blocker line. Oh. Yeah, coming up against Harley Sin there. And that allows Pee Wee a chance. Wow, two refs see the same yeah. thing. We see a blocking with the head call, I believe, on AK Demented. And then I think Lurch there with a forearm, if I'm not mistaken. Looked like a forearm to me, but I'm not a ref. And look at that pack is like starting to speed up where we didn't really see that earlier on in this half. Yeah. Yeah, the other thing I wanted to call attention to, actually now it might be a good chance to take a look at that points per jam I was talking about earlier. Look at that. Good little outline here that we're seeing from Crude Assassins against near-death oddities. We're seeing that near-death oddities have really been able to score and get quite a quite a large one ba one jam scoring is what I'm saying high scoring but we're gonna go back to the action right now all right Clancy John in the lead but followed very closely down uh, Doug Drillmore hot on his hot on his skates I guess I'll go with that hot on his I skates. mean like oh. heels his works but oh calls it off Drillmore levels him down and <laughs> AK Demented just released from the penalty box having a little fun 
Sometimes you just got to know. When you're on your back as a jammer and you have a lead, you're like, this is the time and for it, me to call it. It does give them one more jam of this half. So we are going right into it again. Yeah. This is going to be kind of exciting. We got Rotten Broughton and Sneak Attack. It's a lineup we've seen a few times now. Um, it's gone <laughs> both ways. So, Ooh. Well, Rotten Broughton adding a little bit of defense for Sneak Attack. I love jammers that do defense. I think it is so funny and also awesome. <laughs> Oh, that's an interesting decision. I'm not sure. Uh, Rotten, Rotten oh. in the lead. Wow. And that's Baywop, the pivot for Crude Assassins. Go to the box. All right. So they're going to. And we're hearing very loudly, you might even pick it up on the stream, skate. Run the because pack. Because Crude Assassins have quite a few in the box. So interesting decision to do that because now when we start the second, they're not going to be at full strength. No, and so it looks like now we're heading into our halftime. But oh my goodness, Mad Max, look at that. Only a 12-point difference. This game is only heating up. We've seen the lead flip a couple times, but it's Crude Assassins with the lead right now, 9 to 92, rather, <laughs> to 80. I'm Death Nella, joined by Mad Max, and we'll be right Welcome back to 2019 Flat Track Fever, a WFTDA recognized tournament live from the Acadia Rec Complex in Calgary, Alberta. I'm Death Nella. And I'm Mad Max. And we are so excited to have you join us. We are halfway through an intense game two of day one. My goodness. Between the crude assassins from Fort McMurray and the near-death oddities from Oil City. That's right. That's Edmonton, Alberta. And wow, this mixed gender bracket is going to be something all weekend long, Mad Max. Yeah, I am excited to see the level of competition. Um, we've got, like, again, this game is really well matched up. Uh, size, strength, speed, and points. So You've got it. We took a quick peek at the penalties earlier, and no one's in too much trouble. Seems like both teams have at most one skater with about three penalties. But now is really going to be pivotal. With only 12-point difference at the half, you do not want to end up no. losing points because you're penalty spiraling. And speaking of which, Baywap from Crude Assassins will be starting second half in the penalty box. Yep. Um, yeah, no, it's definitely the second half. That, that's when the penalties happen, especially we saw some speeding up in the end of the last half. Um, with, with that speeding up, we got a lot of failure to reforms. We got a lot of, we'll end up getting... Um, multiplayer blocks, we'll get a lot of more sort of frantic, fast kind of penalties, so watch for that. I can say with a lot of confidence that the ref crews that we have here at the tournament are just top notch. We're seeing refs with so much experience, so much tournament experience, and that's really important because just like the skaters have to pace themselves, officials are on skates too throughout the entire day, probably actually more so than some of the skaters. Yeah. So I mean, it's incredible. They may not be skating as fast, but they are skating far longer. <laughs> so <laughs> That's right. And we're seeing, actually, this is the exact same jammer matchup, Mad Max, that we saw to start the first half. It's Rotten Broughton for Crude Assassins. And Pee Wee from the Near Death Oddities. So, let's see. Uh, Pee Wee's looking for the inside, but gets knocked out. Oh, but just opts to do the no earned pass against Doug Drillmore. So does that mean lead is assessed to him? It does not look like it. Oh. Ref hang 11 saying, yeah, no, he's out on his initial, able to score points, but does not have lead. Yeah, so that's always an interesting situation to be in. Rod Rodden finally gets out, and so she is assessed lead. We'll see what they do. Does not look like the crude assassins are telling her to hold up. And I think Clumsy's a little nope. confused on the bench there saying, call it, but not realizing there was a no earned pass. Yeah, and if you saw there that Pee Wee tried to call it off because he thought that he had lead, um, but as we said earlier, no, he did not. Ooh, hits I the mean, board. it's so tough when you're out there, and even if you know you don't have lead, if you hear people telling you to call it, you're probably still going to try to call it. Yeah, because you're like, oh, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I didn't know. And the interesting way to start the second half between these two teams, Crude Assassins now able to really stretch their uh, points total here. 
Yep. Oh, yeah. They're holding Peewee so hard. These, these blockers are so strong. Yeah, we have side dish out there. Baywap, of course, being released from the penalty box. Yep. No, and the jam is off. Interesting jam. Uh, Crude Assassins uh, widen their lead here. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, they in the end, they, they gained four. Oh, no. 12 to 4, so that is quite a difference there. Yep. And they were already sitting at a pretty decent lead to begin with. So, well, pretty decent. Not not in roller derby terms, but <laughs> in this game. <laughs> oh, and just like that as well, Crude Assassins has passed the century mark here. We have Let's Get Lezikil out there with the purple star. Yep, and then coming up against Sneak Attack. Oh, Lezikil out in front. Sneak attack is getting held by these blockers on the, uh, oh my crude assassins. <laughs> my mind skipped there for a second, oh, that's what that's I get. A OK. -okay. <laughs> There's so much going on right now. And it's sneak attack out on his initial. All right. Ooh. And a penalty assessed to the Herminator. Yeah. He put his arms up like, no, oh. me. And a penalty assessed to let's get Lizzie kill, Lizzie kill. so wow. That's going to be huge for Near Death Oddities picking up a chance for a power jam here. Especially since they didn't have a lead. So to get a power jam when you don't have a lead, that's an awesome situation to be in. And it looks like Sneak Attack was trying to do a little bit of a bait there to get the offense, but oh, managed to sell it enough that it's able to stretch out the Crude Assassin's line, which is what you want to get around. Well, see what his team does to... Do you play some offense for him? Are they going to hold back? Oh, a sweep, a beautiful sweep there from. Yeah, that was push, push, pass with that one. Excellent. This, those subtle moments that are just, it just shows the experience level of these skaters. Oh, 100%. It's crazy. We talk a lot about the jammers because they're the most visible players out there. But those blockers, like we see number 3-3 three, three, uh, just out there doing some real good blocking. That's um, Eyes a hot rod. Yeah, exactly. We do want to show a lot of love to the blockers because it's easy to, to see the person with the star on their head, a little harder to see all that nuanced work. And those referees, that's why they're getting down on the level. And oh my goodness, a cut track assessed to sneak attack. And that means crude assassins are going to start with a power start the next jam. Oof, this has been a interesting jam for us here. Two jammer penalties, a lot of big hits, a lot of points. Um, so lots of fun. Uh, that was a huge jam for Near Death Oddities though, Mad Max, 16 points. Wow, so they know when to capitalize. Now sitting at 100 points, just 11 behind Crude Assassins. Yeah, so they narrowed that lead by about 10 points. In the but it's gonna be Side Dish getting out there with uh, with that power start. Power start. Oh man, coming up against some big strong blockers, uh, but his team's gonna help him as best they can. It's Whoa. always interesting when a team can focus solely on defense, how well they're gonna do. They're really slowing side dish down, but, but still able to get by, pick up lead. Yeah, Lurch well, trying for a chase there, but not quite. Chasing is likely not going to work much at this level with the speed that these skaters have. Yeah, chasing is always a bit of a gamble. Sometimes it really works, sometimes it's not at all. It's a gamble worth taking when you are trying to just penalty kill. Yep, that's and for sure. Ooh, side look dish. at that. Ooh, side dish getting served out of bounds by push, push, pass there. Yeah, but managed to pick up two po three points rather on that jam. Yeah, the near-death oddities had a really nice tripod set up there, almost like a quad pod, because they had full four <laughs> blockers out there, to, and a beautiful stop. I like that, the quad pod. The quad that is pod. awesome. <laughs> We're all about so the quads here, right quad skates. Now, okay, we'll see. Oh, looks like sneak attack is, wait, what? How did we miss that, Mad Max? My goodness. Sneak attack back in the penalty box. So this will be the third straight jam. Sneak attack will be out there this time. Up against Rotten Brot. Ooh, who just got hit out. Uh, to the inside. Herminator again, though, to the penalty box for so, Crude Assassins. Yes, yeah, so Bludgeon was the one who hit out um, uh, Rotten Broughton. So it's nice to see some of these blockers. They're doing a great job in this penalty kill. We may end oh. up seeing some penalty trouble. Oh, big hit by Roxy Balboa. Yeah, like 
it was interesting how that that like happened. She it was it was a hit, but it was also like a push, and it was just enough to get Rotten Brown out. Herminators in the box now too. It has been a lot of penalties just in the last few minutes. Yeah, crude assassins are just rotating out of there. Doug Drillmore, the pivot now out. Oh. This is huge for Oil City. You can start getting the crude assassins into a penalty spiral. You're going to be able to make up those basically handful of points in the world of Derby, but right now not seeing anything showing. No, we'll, but we're we'll bring up those penalties uh, between the next two jams in just a second. Yeah, so it's looking high. still really close. We've got 114 for the crude assassins and 100 for the near-death oddities. Wow. There was so much that happened, Mad Max, in that jam, th but there were no points. I know. That's interesting. Penalties on penalties. Oh, Lizzie Kill's getting just forced out, but there's a no pack, and so everybody's going to run up, try to get back together. Oh, man. Let's get Lizzie Kill getting caught up on Push Push Pass, who has been so effective, just knowing exactly where to be at the right time. Yeah, we got uh, Clancy John coming back through for after getting some points on the board, looks like. He's in lead, scores a nice four points. Yeah, Clancy John managing to just squeak by there, no problem. Yeah. Lizzie Kill getting by on her initial now. Yeah, that no pack uh, really uh, hurt them on that one. And Clumsy Lever on the bench saying call it, and that was really effective for Near Death Oddities, picking up a total of eight points that jam. And just look at that. That lead is bite-sized now. Oh, yeah. The crude Assassins definitely need to try to put a bit more space there. And that they're putting a Doug Drillmore out there. Captain, we haven't seen him jam this half yet. So, Oh, him and Pee-wee doing a nice high five. You can tell they know each other. They're familiar. <laughs> Friendly competition. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what Drillmore does. Oh, he is playing defense. He uses his own players. Oh, but gets knocked out by that. Oh, is that going to be a Very cut? effective way to close the door there. And wow, blink and you miss it. Drug Doug Drillmore <laughs> is out with lead. I thought he had a cut there, but no, he was clean. So great lead for Drillmore. And this is why we trust the referees who have their eyes on the line. I say, wow. Yeah. Oh, what is Drillmore doing? He had a little wrap around there on uh, Lurch. Skating backwards to keep an eye on <laughs> Kiwi. Lurch is having some fun. I'm not Interesting sure. Interesting choice there. Okay, but Near Death does not pick up any points on that go around, but wow, only 10 point difference. Let's take a quick peek at those penalties, Mad Max. Sure thing. This is for the crude assassins who I believe are, yeah, they're getting into a little bit of trouble here. Schemo now at five penalties. Ooh. We're seeing the Herminator with three. Uh, and let's get Lizzie Kill also at four. So something to be mindful of. We'll take a look at the uh, near-death oddity penalties in just a moment. Play is underway. Yeah, sneak attacks, sneaking out for that front lead, followed by Rod and Rodden. Rod and Rodden's been a real strong, steady jammer in this game. She's not pulling any punches and really consistent, forcing those calls. Exactly, and that's the thing. It's like, even though you might not see that on the stack sheet well you kind of do because if you don't get lead but you see a big fat zero beside the other jammer that means you did good yeah it's not as much fun as getting your own lead but you know you're doing the best you can Let's and you're a quick peek at the other penalties here for near-death oddities they're still looking good it's oh actually cool. sneak, sneak attack with five and there's only seven allowed in roller derby so they really have to watch that. He has been their, one of their strongest jammers, if not the strongest jammer, out again in so front. Doug's sending up some hand signals. I'm not sure what they mean, but I'm sure it means something to his team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he skates out of the pack backwards. And uh, meanwhile, looks like Sneak Attack getting hung up out there on Baywap. Now Baywap and Schemo. Whoa, big yes. jump by Doug Drillmore. Is that going to cost him? Schemo did a nice low hit there on sneak uh, attack. It does. Doug Drillmore Ooh. going to the penalty box on a low block call. That's right. If you make that jump, Mad Max, and it's unsafe on the landing, you can get in big trouble. Oh, dear. Okay. That's a big spill on turn three, and the jam will be called for a player injury. Yep. Head ref taking phenomenal control there. 
as some skaters. Yeah, our medics out. They're assessing the situation. Yeah. So what? What it, Mad Max? What happened there at the end? Because there was a bit of yelling, but it was really well directed. Some of the skaters from the team wanted to immediately go over. That's not what you want to do in these situations. Allow, take a knee. Now all the skaters are going to their benches. Yep. While the medic team, who we're so grateful to have on site, we have to have on site. And they're phenomenal. They're here all three days yep. going to assess the skater. An, it's an asset to uh, Derby to have those these professionals, these people out here volunteering their time for us, um, making sure everybody's okay. I myself have benefited from medics. Uh, once got three stitches in a game. I may have been in that game with you. I didn't give you the stitches, which is no. good. No. <laughs> uh, it is St. John's Ambulance who are here, so thank you to them. Yeah. And we will take this time to actually say a couple other thank yous and remind you as well that you can follow along on social media with all the flat track fever action with the hashtag FTF2019. We want to give a big shout out to Rydell. That's right. You play derby, outdoor skate as much as you can, and dabble in some jam skating. Each activity needs its own special gear and accessories. Rydell Skates has everything you need for all your passions. Rydell Skates, you'll love how your Rydells feel. That's rydellskates.com. And Mad Max is going to tell you a bit more about the Girls on Track Foundation. We're very proud to uh, support at Flat Track Fever. Yeah, so uh, did you know that by age 14, girls are dropping out of sports at twice the rate of boys? Girls on Track wants to change this statistic. Learn more about expanding access to roller derby for girls in their teens at girlsontrackfoundation.org. Um, yeah, so roller derby helps girls under 18 to develop confidence, leadership, and organizational skills. Help girls keep playing this amazing sport by providing access to roller derby. Support Girls on Track Foundation today. And we are so grateful as well to the co-hosting organizations, Calgary Roller Derby and Chinook City Roller Derby for making Flat Track Fever 2019 a WFTDA recognized tournament. It's incredible just the evolution of this tournament. It's eight years, it's gone from B level to just this eclectic mix. And now we're seeing just incredibly high level roller derby out there. And uh, we will give you an update on what's happening in just a moment. Right now, teams are still on a review. The skater oh. is standing with a bit of support from the medics. Skating, though, on her own power. Yeah. Oh. Coming over to the medics, that is number 468 Baywop for the crude assassins. Yeah. We she has been just such a force out there blocking for the crude assassins. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, one hit and things just don't go quite right when you fall. So we'll see how that goes and we'll keep you updated. Of course, for those who are new to Derby, if a jam is called for an injury, and even if you're feeling better, you still have to sit out three jams. And that's just for player safety. We want to make sure we're assessing concussions, other types of injuries, and not allowing injured skaters back on the track when they're not ready to be there. Especially in games when you don't have a lot of skaters, weird things happen and we don't yeah. want to see that. So now we're back to the action. We want to thank once again the team from St. John's Ambulance who are here on site as the medic staff. So it looks like the uh, near-death oddities are starting on a uh, power start. And so this will be interesting with Clancy John uh, jamming for them. Near-death oddities have, or sorry, crude assassins have a penalty and we'll see their jammer come out sometime during this jam. Yeah, that's Doug Drillmore who got a penalty right at toward the end of that last jam before it was called off. And interesting decision to have a passive offense. I've noticed that a lot, Mad Max, in the first game of today and this one. Everyone being very passive, although technically, I, yeah, Doug Drillmore is standing now just accelerating onto yeah, the track. He's going to try to get... Uh, that initial pass, and then, oh, skates out backwards. Classic move for Drillmore. He's missing uh, his, oh, he took a star off, putting it back on. Yeah, Doug Drillmore, very confident skater. Able to limit it. There is a multiplayer called on one of the, is it Crude Assassin blockers? Yeah, that's Let's Get Lizzie Kill. Wow, yeah, and that is... Again, they are um, racking up the penalties in this half, and the lead has been narrowed substantially. Well, and the lead can very easily flip now, Mad Max, because penalties, when you start drawing, when you start getting too many, they cost points. Yep. 
That's definitely true. Oh, big push by Side Dish, but then London Brawling puts Side Dish in his place. Um, and that is a blocking with a head call on Side Dish. Yeah, so we Spotted got it by Nice Guy Eddie. Ah, and Pee Wee breaks out in the front. Uh, Pee Wee's uh, one of those jammers that proves you don't have to be the, the tallest or the biggest or the strongest jammer to get through and get that lead. He's been really successful getting leads in this game. I wouldn't want to block against Pee Wee. There's, no. just, there's so much power in the skating there. And now he's just benefiting from that momentum. And what did I tell you? How easy that lead can switch. Near to the oddities now, 122. Crude Assassins, 120. And yep. still so much derby left in this half. And Pee Wee just squeaks through. They're not watching the line. He just takes that out and gets around. If Whoa. this were a championship game, I wouldn't be surprised. The way these two teams are skating, playing against each other, incredible. Oh, Pee Wee does a little apex jump and calls off that jam, so oh, excellent. Near death and oddities right now on the bench feeling really good about that. 10 points above Crude Assassins now. That's 12 points on that jam, a huge one for Pee Wee, a huge one for the near death oddities. Yeah, we've got another classic matchup here that's Sneak Attack and Rotten Rotten. Sneak Attack's playing a little, uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Jocelyn game here. Ron Bratton's reciprocating. Yeah, the two sixes, as I'll call them. <laughs> both number six, both with the star. Oh. Sneak oh. attack having a lot more opportunity to be out there scoring yep. than Ron Bratton has. Yeah, he better be careful, though, because he is racking up the penalties in this game. And Eyes of Hot Broad is causing trouble there for Rotten Bratton who is now dragged back again and push, push, pass as well. Oh, she takes the inside. Oh, oh toe stops. Oh, beautiful work there. Meanwhile, Sneak Attack putting up four more for the near-death oddities. Yeah, it looks like he's probably going to try to get a few more and then call her off. That's my guess. Uh, and he's being told to call yep. it. We'll see. Does he do it in time? Whoa, and he sneaks in. I think oh, that's that is the best outcome two points. Yep. in that situation where it's like, okay, I can maybe pass two people's hips. And that's perfect because that comes they come out with that with six points and the crude assassins are at zero. So this is a huge momentum swing for near death oddities. And if they can keep this rolling as in not get any more stop in, in play, I mean now might not be a bad time for the crude assassins to decide, hey, let's call a timeout. But yeah, reassess. Oh, Drillmore adds an elbow, but I think he gave him a little help, to be honest with you. Oh, Clancy John coming up strong against Doug Drillmore. Drillmore is still huge. fighting, fighting against those strong blockers on the near-death oddities. They are, you know, they take up the track, they muscle them out. They're playing an amazing defensive game tonight. Uh, I'm not sure if that was caught on camera, but the intensity with which AK demented came out of the penalty box is exactly what you want from every skater ever. I love that hustle. There should be no leisurely skating out of the penalty box. Definitely you need not. to get on the track and help ASAP. Yep. And I saw I Drillmore and Clancy John do a nice little high five at the end of that jam. Oh yeah, they're good friends. And here we are, now 20 point difference. Oh, oh wow, Kiwi. I love this. That is great. There's about Arms a foot of height other. difference there. Interesting interesting choice to choose this as the time to bring out the Herminator. Probably not a bad decision. Yeah, oh yeah. Herminator's playing more like a blocker than a jammer. Kind of fun. Well, if they can keep Pee Wee scoreless. Oh, so Pee Wee is going to look for that hole, but wow. he doesn't quite make it out in time. Herminator that worked out lead. so well, obviously, for the crude assassins, not only in lead, but just to be able to create that space, and it's almost as though near-death oddities didn't know that that was happening. No. They were so focused on the fact that Herminator was hitting their jammer that they didn't see him coming in. Oh! oh. That was sly. That, that was so sly. Pretty. I think even Roxy Balbo was like, okay, yeah, you, you got me on that one. Yeah, so he's going to squeak out three points there. Perfect move. Great timing on the call-off. That's what you want to see. Both teams still giving it. We are now in the last quarter of the game play. Wow. wow. And once again, it's the matchup of the six is Rotten Broughton sneak attack. Yeah, these teams seem to think this is the right match to have here. They're both such strong skaters. Both been getting leads. 
Oh, the sneak attack sneaks the lead. Oh, and we have a multiplayer call on side dish. And that penalty trouble might have, as I said, might be what's costing them. Oh, that was a, right in the way. That was an interesting move by sneak attack there. Let's go, let's go hip to hip. Let's use that big side part of my body to come up against a very strong blocker. Yeah, I mean, that's sometimes all you got to do. Like, you, you see yourself coming in, and there's someone there, and you just got to hit them. And, and in, this, uh, in this case, that someone is She's Hell, who's so strong. Oh. Rotten Broughton getting knocked out there on turn three on the initial. Not a cut, though, because the person who knocked her out went out as well. So, yeah, just you got to be, yeah, that track awareness is so key. Yeah, you know, that's funny. I've hardly even spoken about the track awareness, but you're so right. Like, every time we see those near step outs or the, the perfect sort of dip out with one arm, that is track awareness. That's yeah. knowing where you are in space, where everyone else is. And that takes time and experience, and that's what we're seeing out on the track. Definitely. All right, we got Drillmore here up against our, our classic here. Oh my gosh, my brain is Clancy. Clancy, Clancy, Clancy Jones. John. Oh my gosh, I, I said his name. I like that now, Clancy, Clancy Jones. I said his name so many times in this game. And oh, and now we're gonna have to say it again. Unfortunately, a forearm call. So that's that's huge for the crude assassins. Yeah, maybe they're gonna re regain a little bit of that lead they had in the beginning. Yeah, he's not putting much speed on, but. Playing smart is important. Yeah, especially when you have penalties. You gotta make sure even, like you might want to speed, but it's better to play safe. And there we finally see at Mad Max, some effective offense in play. Yes. You have 30 seconds for that other, well, you have 30 seconds for that jammer. So yeah. He's now standing, Clancy John is now standing. So use your offense, look at that. And they're sweeping, they're helping him out. Perfect. Oh, beautiful. Look at that little swing door action there by the Hermit. That's what I'm going to call it, swing door. Swing Just door. opening up a path for their jammer. All right, Clancy's coming in hot. Oh, hell, getting a help in that tripod by Lurch. That was too easy for Doug Drum. We're able to take the inside with just a quick little hop. All right, let's see what's going to happen here. Are we going to get a call off? or? Well, and the pack is speeding up, which is just taking up more time in the game. So he's saying, get to the front, get to the front. He's gonna try, oh, oh beautiful. Oh. That worked so well for the crude assassins there. Because the near-death oddities were stuck at the back, oh. they just couldn't get past. Yeah, it was a perfect move on his part. He said, get to the front, they got to the front, and he passed three players, which was an amazing move. Biggest gem for the crude assassins this half, 15 points. All right, she's hell up against Pee Wee. Ooh. <laughs> this is an interesting, so we, we had the Herminator last time, now it's She's Hell. They Mix are just trying up. to get defensive here because if they can keep the scoring down, <laughs> there's still plenty of time to oh, create the pass. But oh, Pee look at that. Pee Wee was not phased at all, Mad Max. Toe stop run right along the line. Beautiful work there on Pee Wee's part. Consistent. Just the, just the confidence that he has coming around that track. Oh, 100%. I get on my toe stops and I'm like, oh, Lord. Oh. He like lives on his toe steps. Just scooches by the crude assassins line. Meanwhile, she's hell is out on her initial. Oh, he looks like Pee Wee is. Is he gonna call it? We'll see. Yep. He's being told call it off, and so that's what he's gonna do. It should not have been that easy to go up against AK Demented, Super Wench, and Killer B from the crude assassins. No way. That was just a perfect sort of fake out moment there by near death oddities. And now we're getting an official review or, or rather a team timeout. Interesting that this is the time that the crude assassins decide to do the timeout. Yeah, yeah, you would think that this would be, yeah. Oh, actually no, it is an official review. Okay. I did see the O and then I wasn't sure, but it is an official review. Looks like the Captain Doug Drillmore is out there Meanwhile, the near-death oddities captain, Roxy Balboa, is also out there. We'll get all the details on that in just a moment. Yeah, we are still seeing a really close mashup here. Even though uh, the near-death oddities pulled ahead, it's only 138 crude assassins, 151 near-death oddities. It's anybody's game. It's a one jam difference, right? Yeah. We're still in that realm, and eight minutes, or just under nine minutes, that's still plenty of time in Derby to see how this plays out. This has been 
so much fun to watch, Mad Max, when you watch a game like this. And you're going to be skating against these teams later. Yes, I am. So <laughs> what are you seeing that you like? Let's talk about the positives. Um, well, I'm seeing a lot of stable defense, a lot of strong jamming, good jamming matchups. But uh, Both teams are really responding to the other jammers that are being put out. When they see someone who's squirmy, sometimes they put out a defensive jammer. Sometimes they say, no, size matchup is perfect. And so you're seeing a lot of strategy, which is surprising given the fact that both teams are playing with a low bench staff. So that is all team. And that's exactly it. I, I'm just, I love games like this where things are changing and they're dynamic and it's not, okay, we keep losing out lead to this person, let's keep putting the same matchup out. That can be really draining on a jammer. Yeah. And the mental aspect of it, because if you're not winning those matchups, if something isn't clicking, make those adjustments. Don't be afraid to make those adjustments. Yeah. And I, uh, yeah, no, I've, I've been really enjoying watching this. I'm excited to play both teams. There's <laughs> lots of skill out there. I uh, feel like I'm a little bit smaller than a lot of these uh, blockers, but in roller derby, size doesn't really matter. You can be anybody and you can, you can be good at roller derby. I always, I always try to think that maybe the really tall skaters go, oh no, we got a little mini one on the track <laughs> that we got to worry about. You know, I feel like everyone has those moments. Oh, definitely. I mean, there's, there's a skater on the Winnipeg team, uh, Astro Cat, and yes. she is a powerhouse. And she is, she is not tall. She is a small jammer, but oh man, is she, she's amazing out there. And the thing she does, she draws so many penalties because she's shorter, she knows where to work it, she knows where to hit those arms, to hit hit where the other team is going to be getting the penalty. So size, you know, you can work it to your advantage. Just learning, yeah, learning what you can do well on the track and then adding that into your team's wheelhouse. And that's what I love about seeing these teams. Not a lot of these skaters, they don't always skate together. No. So that's the other thing that's always so impressive when you have tournaments like Flat Track where you're able to have people who maybe skate together all the time, joining people who are maybe new, and that's not that uncommon, especially in Western Canadian Derby yes. where Saskatchewan skaters, Alberta skaters, we're besties, we yep. like each other, we play together oh. on the same team, we skate against each other, and that's so great to see is that growth of the sport and the ability to come in and do, and do pickup games when needed. And 100%, like, especially with this mixed gender bracket, because with male skaters, they don't often get as much play time as female identified skaters. So to be able to, like, these kinds of tournaments are an asset, really key. Okay, so this is really great news from Scrappy, who's our alt ref. That was incredible. So, black team, that's Crude Assassins, asked for a cut track penalty to be assessed to Pee Wee from Near Death Oddities. And after review, well, the referees decided that is exactly what's going to happen. So, we're going to have Rotten Broughton out on a power start. This is really big for the Crude Assassins and a chance to make up that deficit. Yeah, especially the, since they're trailing here. Like, they're going to look for as many points as they possibly can on this gym. We'll see how they're going to do it. Oh, oh perfect beautiful. little base. Sweep. To the outside. Oh, oh, but right as I say that, look at the reforming there oh. on Near Death Oddities. They're going to be... But Ooh. Rotten Broughton able to get by. Beautiful. Still took up 15 seconds of that jam, though, and that's huge when you're talking about a 30-second jammer penalty. Already Pee Wee is standing up. And the Crude Assassins did a really good job of just holding back, letting that no pack be called, and so giving Rotten Broughton less blockers on her so she could just skate right through. Oh, Pee Wee's back in, though, so we'll see what Rotten Broughton does. Oh, beautiful. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Is it a cut, though? No, it's, it's a, a forearm call because so she doesn't get a cut, but she gets a forearm. That may have even surprised Rotten Broughton a little bit, but that does allow Pee Wee a chance to get the power. Oh, wow. So we had two power, two power jams in this jam so far. Wow. So he was not assessed lead, so the jam will go to full minutes. Crude Assassin's looking to stop, a Pee Wee cuts through. And now we see Near Death Oddities hanging back. They're anticipating Rotten Broughton's entrance, and that's exactly oh. what's happening now. Do you see Pee Wee just 
Oh, he just yep. inched his way through. Oh, that's such a, oh, when you're a blocker, that's just such a tick off. Woo. You're like, oh, <laughs> you know that you should have been on the line, but you thought that inch of space was enough. Oh, nope. whoa, again, okay, but look at that. Let's get Lizzie Kill able to get the knockout there, but Pee Wee almost made it out. I'm hearing whistles. Oh yeah, let's get Lizzie Kill oh, is sent I'm out. I'm gonna assume that's a failure to reform, yep. And we might need to check on those penalty numbers, uh, Mad Max, because let's get Lizzie Kill was already in a bit of penalty trouble earlier. All right, yeah, Ron so Brown came back take in. A quick peek at those penalties. Oh yeah, we have oh, wow. Schemo at six, six, so one off, and let's get Lizzie Kill six is as also well. at six. So that is very uh, interesting for the crude assassins. We'll have another quick peek at the penalties later. Meanwhile, it is AK Demented with the star. We haven't seen her much out there, but look at that. Whoa. Fresh legs, basically. Yeah, and you know, sometimes fast. that's what you need, right? You've got a game like this. Uh, your jammers have been jamming on and on and on. You need to throw in a fresh body. Well, and right now, Crude Assassins basically oh. have to get a lead to really secure a lead on this game. But Sneak Attack is right back there, oh, able I mean, to get by Doug Drillmore, no problem. Demented better watch out. Gets a oh, hit. And there was a no earn pass there for AK Demented. So good. Demented getting those extra four points. No, showing really, like knowing when to call it. But it was only a net gain of one on Near Death Oddities, so great work by Near Death Oddities to keep their lead alive. And this is where now the clock really is winding down. Side Dish is going to need to get lead here, start making a difference. Oh, it actually looks like the Near Death Oddities had seven points on that jam. Oh, and yes, never Apples mind. That was six. reversed. Yep. Yep. Uh, we saw the ref come in say, nope, reverse scores. Clancy John started getting caught up, but oh, look at that. Well, takes the inside line, followed right behind. And right now, Clancy Ooh, John passed. can take a leisurely skate to kill time. Oh yeah, and that's, and that's exactly what he wants to do. Near death oddities, you're in skate, skate, that's what's happening. And he's gonna. And they're just gonna keep going. Yeah, there we go, Crude Assassins stops it. Stop chasing, it's not helping you. Let them get a no pack. Well, it's not helping, and then of course, all it's doing is chewing up clock time, which is what the Crude Assassins need. They're still within one jam, but that's gonna be a hard working jam to get. And now we have Pee Wee on the line again for Near Death Oddities, who's proven that this second half is his. Yes, Pee Wee is just on it, on fire, getting those leads, getting out, sneaking on the line. Okay, he quick little change up there. Oh, oh. here's Rotten Broughton, a little bump. Rotten Broughton deciding, no, I don't want to risk possibly getting a no earn pass and not getting leads, so I'm gonna come back in. Come back. Oh, oh one more oh. block, a big hit by Yabba. Yabby? Yabby, yabby dabby doo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and oh. Pee Wee, you know, that looks like that would have been a cut, so he comes back out and right behind. Yeah, a little flying squirrel move on the inside there of turn two. Broughton brought in out with lead, which is what she wanted, but chewed up 30 seconds of clock time for that. Yeah, Pee Wee. Oh, and the uh, near death oddities are giving a lot of force. Yep, making Rotten Broughton call it off. Oh. But there was a forearm penalty assessed oh. to Rotten Broughton. And so, yeah, that's interesting. It's interesting that it was called off. Yes, because usually when you get a penalty, you're not allowed to call off the jam. It is very possible that it happened in the moment of the call off, which is what I will entrust did happen because that's what the referees have played it as. All right, more high fives oh, between Sneak as Attack As I say and that, no, there was no penalty assessed to Rotten Broughton. Oh, interesting. That penalty was assessed to a different skater, a near-death oddity skater, actually. So it's Doug Drillmore out there with lead and the star, of course, for the Crude Assassins. All right, let's see how the Crude Assassins do in this gym. Whoa, staying on his toe stops. Drillmore, always sturdy on his skates. Let's see if he gets any points here. 
Uh, that looks like three points That's for three, chipping away, but still that clock is winding down. Um, did I just see Lurch get knocked around like a ping pong ball? What? Yeah, anything this can happen. I love Derby. It's like, by the way, Lurch is a great skater, enjoys skating against her. I just never see that, so no. I have to mention it. Lurch is so strong. It is <laughs> impressive to see so, somebody be able to hit Lurch like that. So we have the Herminator out for Crude Assassins against Clancy John. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, oh we Clancy have. John getting caught up there on the skates. Yeah, sometimes like you fall, there's no way to get out of that situation. You just try to make yourself as small as possible and wait till it's yeah, over. That was hot start for the crude assassins like who was caught underneath. Clancy John doing the right thing in that moment, actually yielding, making mm. sure, okay, okay, I'm not taking advantage of this, able to get lead. Yeah. Especially too, like None of us are here to hurt each other. We want to make sure everybody's okay. And so in a game where we've seen so much offensive tactics, so much drive and energy and effort, now we're seeing a slightly different game where near-death oddities are playing it safe, wanting to keep that lead. There's still time. Anything goes in the game of Derby. It's Rotten Broughton up against Sneak Attack. A uh, classic matchup. 6-6. Six six. <laughs> uh, I think Sneak Attack's looking for that line, pushing, pushing, getting stopped, but pushing oh. through. And it is Sneak Attack out with lead. That well, is huge for the near-death oddities, because they are going to run it now. Yep, pretty much secures near-death oddities win here. Uh, anything can go. <laughs> we we know that both teams have lost lead multiple times due to penalties, so... We're going to see what happens, but a multiplayer was called instead on She's Hell with the Crude Assassins. Mm -hmm. Ron Rodden taking the inside line, finally getting out. Gets get four pass. points for her efforts, and this is likely what's going to happen is they're just going to want to keep running this jam yep. while they have control. Points, points, points. Look at him. Oh, Lizzie Kill's not even looking. He just sneaks on right by. Guess Lizzie, that's why, yeah. Yeah, Lizzie Kill has to be very careful as well with six penalties against her so far. Ooh, Ron Rodden's getting a little assist there, coming out, scoring some more points. We're just gonna keep going, I think. That's yeah, Captain gist. Doug Drillmore taking it on, but Sneak Attack able to get by, decides to do a no earned pass on that one, picks up three. And Calls I see jumping off. up and down Joy from the near-death oddities bench. Bad Max, we have an unofficial score. And it definitely favors Near Death Oddities, 181, Crude Assassins, 162. The unofficial final. Yeah, that's that was an exciting game. We saw Crude Assassins in the lead, and then the Near Death Oddities coming out in the second half and just destroying that. If you're going to watch this back, which we always say you do, it's always great to review. This is This is the game to see how you chip away, how you uh. protect points and how you make that happen. But wow, the effort from both teams was just phenomenal. Crude Assassins with some incredible moments in this game. Love seeing the many different jammers from the Crude Assassins, and I think that was a smart thing to do as they move forward in the tournament, able to do that. Yes, definitely. Um, it's very loud in here. So <laughs> happy to be out here watching this amazing day of Derby. Uh, we've got another great game coming up next. Um, we're going to be here all day with an exciting derby action. That's right. Actually, as you mentioned that, let's give a shout out to our next teams. This is Calgary Roller Derby, the C CRD Jane Deere up against Gas City Roller Derby Regulators. That's going to be a great game Right. in the Battle of Alberta bracket, as I'll call it. So I'm Death Nella. And I'm Mad Max. And you're watching Flat Track Fever 2019, a WFTDA recognized tournament. <laughs> 